This is a talk. A talk is like a secure envelope in which you can put any crypto coin into it, bitcoins, altcoins or tokens. Once you lock the envelope, you can safely transfer it to someone else in less than a second. Applied cryptography has a golden rule that should never be broken by cryptographers. The rule is do not roll your own crypto. Cryptology is developed in a scientific exchange and nobody can easily develop new approved cryptography themselves. An example is the SHA3 algorithm, the successor of SHA2, which is also used by the Bitcoin protocol. It has been studied for over 10 years before an algorithm was finally selected and considered safe. So, for you as an ICO investor, this is an important feature. The next time you read a white paper from an ICO, make sure the golden rule is met. Tarkrex is a crypto system based solely on profound and well studied cryptography. Tarkrex is unique in four ways. Tarkrex is completely decentralized. Trade execution, order managing, clearing and settlement are completely decentralized and do not require trusted parties. Tarkrex operates in real time. Mathematically, it can perform an unlimited number of transactions per second. This is unique. Tarkrex is designed for an online and offline setting. It allows all types of trading execution with limit and market orders. And Tarkrex is not a blockchain. All previous approaches to realize a decentralized exchange were sometimes based on blockchain technology or the idea of payment channels. But blockchains are not suitable for decentralized exchanges because blockchain use a latency by design concept. I'll show you that Tarkrex is superior to existing approaches and payment channels. In short, Tarkrex is the first complete decentralized exchange geared for a high-speed setting. It is the first decentralized exchange that really deserves this name. What is a TOC? A TOC is a cryptographic deposit guarantee. What is a deposit guarantee? These are trading transactions that are secured by one or more trustees. The concept is already familiar to you from Bitcoin exchanges. Before Alice or Bob can trade on an exchange, they must first make a deposit in Bitcoin or US dollars, for example. If Alice buys Bitcoin for US dollars from Bob, at the time of the trade execution, only a guarantee is exchanged between the two. The Bitcoin exchange guarantees Alice and Bob that both have the assets at their disposal and that trading is guaranteed. Precisely expressed, at the time of the trade execution, Alice and Bob only act as guarantors of the deposits, but they do not exchange assets themselves in this moment. Let's complete the model. After the execution of the trade, the exchange is doing a clearing. This is the moment when the exchange balances the accounts of Alice and Bob. And when Alice or Bob withdraw their assets from the exchange, it comes to the last phase of the trade, the settlement. In simple terms, with a deposit guarantee, someone assures that a trader has the assets he trades. Deposit guarantees are the basis for any trading in a financial setting. The example showed you the three phases of a trade, execution, clearing and settlement. So how can a deposit guarantee be cryptographically represented? There are three characteristics to be ensured. First, nobody is allowed to access the deposit as long as it is tradable. In a cryptographic sense, the deposit is transferred to several trustees. Secondly, the trustees must be part of a decentralized network and no trusted third party may be required. Third, we need to be able to truthfully express the deposit value. So that no one can access a deposit, Tarkrex transfers the deposit to a public key that nobody knows the private key. The first layer of Tarkrex is a distributed key generator, 
A distributed key generator is an encryption process in which multiple nodes compute a common public and a distributed private key. This cryptography does not require any trusted third parties. Each node knows only a part of the private key. It's called the secret share. Only the sum of all secret shares corresponds to the actual private key. We use a distributed key generator with threshold cryptography. This means that the private key can only be reconstructed of the vast majority of participating nodes. At for example 100 nodes total requires 50 plus 1 nodes. Nodes that hold a secret share of a talk are called escrow nodes. Let's look at an example with Bitcoin. If Alice builds a talk to hold Bitcoins, then she uses the TalkRex network to create a public and a private distributed key. Alice receives the public address of the talk and sends her Bitcoin to this address. Once the Bitcoin transaction is completed, nobody, even Alice, has access to the Bitcoins. Why does Alice, when creating a talk, outsource the private key to other nodes? Simply because Alice is not allowed to remove Bitcoin during or before a transaction. A talk also secures the interests of Bob, who may later trade the talk with Alice. For Bob, it is important that the Bitcoin is still in the talk after a trade. The talk is the deposit guarantee. Can Alice remove the Bitcoin from the deposit guarantee? Of course, the escrow nodes also hold a signature of the actual owner of a talk. In this case, by Alice. If Alice can prove the ownership of a talk using her signature, the escrow nodes send back their secret shares to Alice in accordance with the protocol. This allows Alice to reconstruct the Bitcoin's private key and she can use it. First, the private key of a talk corresponds to the private key of the asset. So if you create a talk for Bitcoin, then the private key of the talk matches the private key for the Bitcoin. This process is referred as to open a talk. Once a talk has been opened, it can no longer be used for trading. What matters is that the private key of the talk matches the private key of the Bitcoin in our example. That's one of the reasons why talk rigs can also settle assets at high speed. In simple terms, only the private keys to the assets are traded. The settlement speed is proportional, by the way, to the size of the threshold. I've always talked about Bitcoin as an example. However, a talk can be used for any blockchain-based assets for which there is a public ledger. Now that you have gotten to know the nature of a talk, let's discuss a few details before looking at the talk in its overall context. A fully decentralized exchange must be able to map both online and offline settings. In an online setting, all trading parties must be connected to the network to trade. The Lightning Network is an example of this. In an offline setting, the trading parties may also be disconnected from the network, such as for example, this is the case with a classical crypto exchange. Why is that important? Physically, Direct trade between two parties, an online setting, is faster than trading through third parties, which is an offline setting. You will see that the speed difference between the two settings in TACREG's network is only marginal. However, a professional decentralized exchange such as TACREX must also seek a nanosecond trading scenario, which requires a precise differentiation. For example, 10x, a company through which you can use your coins via a debit card in shops, has a critical liquidity need, namely when you use your card. Then 10x has to liquidate your coins in order to be able to carry out a clearing with the credit card providers. So for 10x it's critical to trade extremely fast and cost effective. The costs without third party are close to zero. In summary, the online setting is slightly more efficient than the offline setting, but efficient enough to represent a professional trade in the nanosecond range. The offline setting is just as important as you want to place limit orders that will only be captured by the market at a later date. TACREX supports both.
There are two types of talks. An on talk is optimized for the online setting. In doing so, Alice keeps a key part itself when creating a talk and the other part is kept spread by the escrow nodes. An on off talk can be used in both an online and offline setting. In this case, the talk's private key is completely transferred to the escrow nodes. You already recognize the difference? Correctly, an on talk requires only a lower threshold from the point of crypt analysis, which results in performance and cost advantages. Since we look at the trade in real time, it was important to me that you already know this differentiation. There is one more question left. How do we know how many coins are tied in a talk? The second layer of the TalkRex network is a validation layer. This can determine how many coins a talk contains. Validation is done through the public ledgers of the respective blockchains. Let's take an example of a Bitcoin. Imagine you download a Bitcoin wallet software configured as a full node. The wallet answers at the request of the TalkRex network how many Bitcoins are tied to a public address. And that is what many validation nodes do so that the TalkRex network can verify the value of a talk at any time. To ensure the centene fault tolerance, the validation layer is subjected to a cryptographic election scheme so that the truth of the statements can be verified. The motivation to participate as a validation node on the TalkRex network is a return to the operators. As an aside, it should be noted that additional sources of revenue for miners or operators of full or master nodes arise. That's the nature of a talk. It is a shared public key whose private key is distributed and cryptographically secure, whose value can be verified. On the concept of talks, the settlement and clearing of talk rigs builds up. And all our requirements are met. No one can access the assets of a talk without the knowledge of the escrowed nodes. The escrows are decentralized and secure via threshold cryptography. And the deposit cannot be changed afterwards. Another aspect of TalkRex comes to the fore splitting, which is used for limit orders and pricing. Your objection that the value of a talk could not be reduced but could be increased in hindsight is justified. If you take a closer look at the splitting, you will see that it does not matter. There are no disadvantages to the owner of a talk in this case. Hey, come here, come here. Yeah, let me introduce you to a friend. He has been with us every time we worked on TalkRex for nearly a year and a half, and it's Jesse Stark, and he's a very, very good cryptographer, right? So, okay, go. What about the longevity and correctness of the TalkRex crypto system? To underpin the longevity and correctness of TalkRex, we use a proactive secret sharing scheme. A talk is tied to a time function. After a while, the escrow nodes cause the secret shares of a talk to be renewed with new escrow nodes in the network. Proactive secret sharing is a cryptography that allows the recalculation of secret shares and the adjustment of the threshold without changing the private key itself. All secret shares become invalid. We use a Kadamlia inspired distance metric which we call a trust metric. As a result, TalkRex is aware of its topology and organizes, tr organizes trusted nodes and nodes that participate in the network in the long term. In other words, the network can clean itself of adversaries and insecure nodes that have been compromised, for example. How can a talk be exchanged in real time? Let's take a look at this with an on-talk in an online setting first. Alice and Bob first share their own key parts peer-to-peer. -peer. These are exchanged using verifiable secret sharing and zero-knowledge proofs to exclude harmful players. At the same time, they select a coordinator from the escrow nodes who hold their talk key parts. 
After Alice and Bob proved to the coordinators the key exchange by signature, the coordinators contact the threshold of the escrow nodes and initiate a reshare and a change of ownership. That is, in a trade, the escrow nodes are swapped with a new cluster of escrow nodes and during this process the ownership signature of the secret shares is changed. If at one point a protocol error occurs, the transaction is rolled back, meaning Alice and Bob each keep their original talk. However, protocol errors are unlikely, as more than 51% of participating escrow nodes would have to be half protocol non-conform. As, as an aside, non-conformity leads to a decrease in the trust metric, which lowers the return on an escrow node. If the trust metric is too low, escrow nodes will be sorted out by the Tokrix network. The trade execution between Alice and Bob has already ended with the exchange of their own key parts and the selection of coordinators. The process takes a few milliseconds and the coordinators run their protocols independently of Alice and Bob. Tokrex allows high-speed trading because only the private keys of the assets are traded. This is a fundamental difference to all previous solutions in this area and allows Tokrex the high-speed settlement. Soon we'll show another aspect, the splitting. This allows limit order trades with support for partial executions. What is different in an offline setting? As mentioned earlier, only an on-off talk that is with a fully distributed private talk key can be used. In an offline setting, Alice and Bob create a limit order for their talk. To this end, the trading party contacts at least one threshold of the escrow nodes holding their talk key parts. It will then deposit a condition to the secret shares of the talk at the escrow nodes describing the limit order. For example, swap this talk for a Bitcoin against 580A. The price of 2 millibitcoin per ADA is implied in the quantity relation. The escrow nodes execute a trade, a change of ownership, only if the conditions of the limit order are met by the counterparty. Of course, the offline setting is completely decentralized, as a change of ownership requires a threshold of escrow nodes. This means that 51% of the nodes must check the order conditions before trading is released. How does order matching work in the Tokrex crypto system? Since the most people I know associate an order matching instantly with an order book, let's explore the message flow of an exchange briefly by looking into history. Stock exchanges started with floor trading. Here are some pictures from this period. There were market makers. These were dealers on the floor who yelled out trading orders. Therefore, it was called in French crier trading. The other traders have accepted these trades via hand signals. Transferred to computer science, this is a broadcast network. And that's exactly what's happened when Alice places an order with Tokrex. It sends these messages to all traders in the Tokrex network that are present in the market. When Alice announces her order, every node in the network can accept the trade. If a node accepts the trade, the node contacts Alice directly and proposes her either a full or partial execution. Depending on the configuration of Alice's trading client, she then executes her trading decision. A market order is accordingly an underbidding process in an online setting. And <clears throat> An interesting aspect of Tokrex is that the matching is done also peer-to-peer, -peer, so it is not routed through a central order book. The Tokrex message flow is completely heterogeneous. As a side note, in floor trading there were no order books. The order book is, if you like, a relic of the computerization of trading in the 80s and designed for centralized computing. Let's look at the matching in the offline setting. In an offline setting, Alice's order announcement on the network fades as no trader wants to accept her trade. Each node can extend its Tokrex client to a local matching engine or use another external Tokrex compliant application for that. We refer to such nodes as market nodes.
Let's say an order announcement from Alice does not find a counterpart. In this case, the market note saves the order for a future trade. If at a later point in the network there is an order announcement from Bob that can be fulfilled by Alice cashed order, the market node immediately contacts Bob and offers Bob a run. The market node acts on behalf of Alice. That means a market node can offer original order announcements of other traders time shifted. Alice does not need to be connected to the network at this time. The extraordinary thing about the Tarkrex crypto system is that the order terms are known to the escrow nodes. So they will only be able to change ownership of the Tarkrex distributed private key parts if the market node submits a valid order. Even if Alice cancels the order later, outdated cached orders will be left without results. The trading process then corresponds to an online setting where Alice is replaced by the market node. Thus, offline matching is completely decentralized and can be executed by any other node without compromising the security of the talks. The market node is remunerated for its service by Alice in terms of fees paid in Tarkrex coins. Offline matching is also performed peer-to-peer. -peer. As you could see, Tarkrex has no bottleneck. Therefore, mathematically, Tarkrex can perform an unlimited number of transactions per second since all communication is always peer-to-peer. -peer. What happens if there are multiple market nodes for a market? The market nodes compete each other. On one hand, by the amount of cashed offline orders, on the other hand, by their speed and fees. Tuckrex allows full decentralization of offline matching engines. The Tuckrex standard client can be extended via a smart talk with a matching engine so that each user can act as a market node. Suppose somewhere out there there is another genius developer developing a super fast matching engine and thus create a competitive advantage. The extension and development of Tarkrex is not limited to the client or a special programming language because Tarkrex works on a practical basis. The matching proves once again that Tarkrex is an ecosystem. In illiquid markets, market nodes can develop higher fees. But in very liquid markets, the fees are expected to be cheaper as more competition is expected. Tarkrex is an ecosystem with escrow nodes, market nodes and validation nodes that every user can operate. Its development is determined solely by the profitability. The currency we use is Tarkrex coins, whose ICO you can participate in. Let's come to an exciting question. Why does a talk work cross-chain? And why almost every asset can be kept by a talk across blockchains? Blockchains use public-private key cryptography and digital signing for transaction signing. In asymmetric cryptography, there is only a handful of common crypto systems to calculate these key pairs, like RSA, Edward Curves or Elliptical Curve cryptography. The latter is the most popular because it's very efficient. A modular distributed key generator such as Tarkrex can produce SA, EDDSA and ECDSA key pairs. This means that a TARC means distributed key pairs can be generated for almost every blockchain. The advantage is that the address blockchain technology does not have to be adapted because it already uses these algorithms. We designed the distributed key generator in a model way so that the key pairs of different algorithms with different parameterizations can be generated and almost complete coverage of all blockchains can be achieved. Modularization is needed to support future blockchain technology because we will certainly soon see new public key cryptography algorithms in terms of quantum computer resistance. To put it simply, Tarkrex exploits the lowest common denominator of all blockchains in order to maintain their value as deposit guarantee. What's up with splitting? As mentioned earlier, splitting is another aspect of the system that allows limit orders and supports pricing in a multiple chain asset setting. For example, 
If Alice places a Bitcoin in a talk and Bob 100 Ethereum, pricing and trading would be impractical. Trading is set to a specific contract size. Standardized contract sizes are also known from futures trading. For example, corn futures are traded in lots, each comprising 5,000 tufts of corn per contract. No one is just trading a single tuft. Suppose we trade on Tarkreg's enemy coin, which is worth about 50 Satoshi against Bitcoin. Then one would choose a reasonable contract size such as 10,000 enemy coins for 1 cent Bitcoin, that is 0.01 Bitcoin. Transfer to a market would be 2 enemy talks against a centi Bitcoin talk or 10 milli Bitcoin talks. Splitting allows the trader to split coins into a larger number of tokens to simplify pricing. For example, Alice sends a Bitcoin to a talk and has it split on centi Bitcoin. Then she gets back 100 talks whose total is 1 Bitcoin. Splitting is a client-side feature of Tarkrex. The network is only needed to create the talks. If during a trade it becomes necessary to break a talk into smaller units, this is done automatically via intermediate trades. A market node or any trader in an online setting can break a talk into smaller tokens. This corresponds to the process of changing money. If Alice has a centi Bitcoin talk and she trades on a market with milli Bitcoin, then Tarkrex will insert an intermediate trade. Then the centi Bitcoin talk first is exchanged to 10 milli Bitcoin and then it initiates the actual trade. We call this type of transaction stack trades. Technically, the trade then takes place between at least three peers. The splitting allows partial executions, which in turn allows limit orders with partial execution. Since the users themselves create markets on Tarkrex, they also set the contract sizes themselves. Thus, it can be expected that the markets will develop themselves with optimal contract sizes for pricing. Finally, let's take a look at Tarkrex in comparison to the Lightning Network. The Lightning Network is an interesting and one of the few respectable systems for solving decentralized trade. If you are more familiar with payment channels, you will have already realized that Tarkrex has a different system character and uses a completely different system architecture. Tarkrex and the Lightning Network share the ability to perform peer-to-peer -peer communication resulting in high speed. Due to the flexibility of Tark, Tarkrex can consistently follow the peer-to-peer -peer approach and is not dependent on a multi-hop setting and a poor online setting like the Lightning Network. It may be known that the Lightning Network, mathematically speaking, actually transformed the scaling problem into a liquidity problem. If we divide the maximum supply of, for example, Bitcoin into payment channels with a value of one Bitcoin per hop, this results in a maximum of about 10.5 million connections. As a consequence, this would try up the liquidity of Bitcoin since the coins are then bound in the payment channels. This just should show the theoretical limits of payment channels and the Lightning Network. Of course, there are applications in which payment channels make sense. I do not want to talk too much about the technical differences, but rather about handling from the user point of view. If a payment channel is opened in the Lightning Network and closed again, two on-chain transactions are required. Tarkrex requires one on-chain transaction to fill a talk. When opening a talk, there is no longer an on-chain transaction needed because the talk matches the asset's private key. In the case of splitting, a large number of on-chain transactions may occur once. However, once coins are bound in a talk, they can always be reused without block latency. As mentioned in splitting, any user can enable smart talks that provide an exchange between units for other traders. In practice, you would not open 10 centi Bitcoin talks, but swap it to a talk containing one Bitcoin first. This leaves the liquidity of smaller units in the Tarkrex network and the circulation speed of the smaller units is expected to be relatively high. 
This exchange between units is automated in the Tacrix network so that a high level of liquidity in small units is always available. As time goes by, the need for splitting therefore decreases in the long term. We share the opinion of Charles Hoskinson and Kay Dano that it is very important to research and develop blockchain crypto systems with a scientific approach. This is also the approach we have followed with Tacrix and will follow. There is so much more to discuss about Tacrix, such as another innovation we call stacked stakes, the ability to land stakes from other blockchains, the details of how to incorporate with clearing services, the transaction stack and the Tacrix coins and so on. You will find more videos on our webpage. I hope that the introduction was helpful and I thank you for your support. Tacrix aims to create an ecosystem that will forever replace central risky exchanges. If you are also in favor of decentralization, freedom and more security, please share this video with your crypto friends and followers. Any little support will help to spread the idea around the world. Let's join forces to strengthen the next generation of Cypherpunk. If you like a fully decentralized exchange like Tacrix that no central authority can ever switch off anymore, then jump to our website and save your coins right now. To support the future and independence of the cryptocurrency community. While working on Tacrex, Jesse made a funny discovery about the identity of Satoshi Nakamoto, which will surprise even Bitcoin insiders. Is Satoshi Nakamoto in the end a team of four computer scientists? In 2004, four years before Satoshi Nakamoto put Bitcoin into action, four Japanese scientists published a document entitled Implementation and Evaluation of a Micropayment System for Mobile Environments. 
they describe an electronic cash system using hash change to solve the double spending problem as well as Satoshi did. It is similar in some parts to Bitcoin. The names of the scientists are Please forgive me if I do not speak the names correctly. Sensaku Kiyomoto, Toshi Yaki Tanaka, Koi Nakao, and Akira Yamada.